It's just a little over two decades now since enthusiasts in the country were introduced to the world of VTech when Honda first launched the city back in 1998. Of course, over the years, the car has made a name for itself, not just as one of the most spacious and most premium sedans in its segment, but also as a car that's been loved by enthusiasts across generations. Well, in fact, the Honda City has pretty much ruled its segment single-handedly and it's only in the recent years that it faced some stiff competition in the form of the Maruti Suzuki Sias and the Hyundai Verna. But this right here is the all-new 5th generation Honda City that's just about to get launched in the country and we are here to tell you what it feels like to drive and also if this car really has what it takes to take that legacy forward. The previous generation city's design was an evolution of its predecessors and the 5th generation city is a similar story. The front end is new but has familiar design traits like the thick, single slat chrome grille and slightly rounded nose that reminds of the Civic. The ZX trim gets full LED headlights and the sharp design of its internal elements make the headlights look distinctive. The side profile has not really changed and even the door handles are the same. Wing mirrors have been moved backwards and sit on the shoulder line to reduce blind spots now. It's the rear end that's the most appealing to look at though, particularly the rear three quarter. The tail lights look nice and I dare say have a BMW like design. I also like the way they extend onto the sides which increases their visual appeal. Overall there's an elevated sense of grandeur to the car's design and the new city feels like a big car in terms of road presence. This being a full generation change, Honda has redesigned the interiors completely but very carefully in order to ensure that it offers the same premium vibe that the Honda City has always been known for. So you've got a bit of soft touch leather here with real stitching and these plastics here are hard but they do offer a very premium look and feel. There's an 8 inch touch screen here for the infotainment system. The AC controls have been revised and Honda has gone back to rotary knobs from the touch screen that used to exist in the previous generation. A crisp 7 inch LCD display functions as the instrument console and information is arranged well while the tachometer integrates a G meter which is a segment first. Another segment first is the addition of Honda's lane watch camera which is very useful when turning left as it eliminates any possible blind spots. The car's increased length and width make it more spacious and I was also impressed by the space around the driver's seat. Move to the rear and you're instantly reminded why the city is one of the most preferred chauffeur driven cars in its segment. In fact Honda has increased legroom and knee room further by scooping out the rear of the front seats. Connected technologies have found their way into a lot of cars that have been launched in the past year and Honda of course is not one to be left behind. So the new generation city here is the first car in India to integrate connectivity with Alexa, the virtual assistant from Amazon. Effectively downloading the Alexa app either on iOS or Android will allow you to access and control up to 10 different features in this car. So you could turn the AC on or off, lock or unlock the doors, check fuel status and do a lot more even when you're not close to your car. Alexa connectivity though is on offer in the top of the line petrol automatic version only. The city also gets the updated Honda Connect 2.0 which brings more convenience and safety features in addition to the usual geofencing, speed limits and the like. Besides these, the key fob now lets you turn the engine on or off when outside it or open or close all the windows and the sunroof. Honda has also added ESC, a tire pressure monitoring system, hill start assist and what it calls AHA or Agile Handling Assist which applies the brakes slightly on the inside front wheel when turning to aid cornering and stability. Honda is known to make some of the smoothest engines, especially the petrol ones and the new generation city's engine is yet another example of that. This is actually the same 1.5 litre 4 cylinder IV tech that we have seen on the city for a very long time but it has been reworked extensively yet again to make it even smoother and reduce the frictional losses even further. Well, if you were expecting it to be more powerful, you might be a little disappointed because the outputs are the same at 120 bhp and 145 Nm. But like I said, the responses and overall refinement levels are definitely a lot better. The 1.5 litre petrol engine employs a DOHC setup now, which is one reason behind its improved responses. When revved hard, the engine also lets out a sporty exhaust note while feeling extremely smooth all the way to the red line. A lot of us were looking forward to Honda bringing in the hybrid version of the city this time. But for now, what we get is the 1.5 litre petrol and the 1.5 litre diesel, which are the same as before. Of course, the transmission options include a CVT for the petrol, but the bigger news here is that the petrol now gets the six-speed manual as standard. And that is really good news if you like driving, and especially if you do a lot of highway driving. 
On the other hand, the CVT is quite impressive as well and Honda seems to have really got the CVTs right, be it with the Amaze or now with the City. The rubber band effect has been reduced significantly in the CVT and the transmission feels more responsive, choosing the best of its 7 steps depending on throttle inputs. It feels almost like an automatic transmission with actual gears and using the paddle shifters feels good too. The 6-speed manual gearbox on the other hand is a slick shifting unit and to be honest, I think I still like my 3 pedals more. Not that the Honda City ever gave us a chance to complain about its NVH levels, but this new generation car improves on that even further thanks to the use of better sound deadening materials like spray foam which sits here in the front A pillar and that really makes the cabin quieter especially at highway speeds. The chassis underpinning the new 5th generation city is an evolved version of what the 4th generation city's chassis was. The suspension has been updated as well, in fact the suspension is lighter now so there's lesser unsprung weight which obviously translates to better handling and in fact this car now offers an even better balance between ride and handling and that's something that we've always liked the city for. So in a nutshell, the new 5th generation Honda City is more of an evolution of everything that the city has been known for previously, be it the spaciousness, be it the premium feel or the super refined powertrains. I would have certainly liked the addition of the hybrid powertrain right here right now, but I guess we will have to wait for that a bit more. But on the whole, this car is definitely packaged a lot better as it gets more technology and a whole lot of features as well now, which really brings it up to the mark and it really has what it takes to carry the city's legacy forward.